sisters god bless this might be just a little off the cuff teaching by a little inspiration but look at them waves who wants to walk out on that does anyone want to step out the boat and start walking on those waves so i wanted to go over that account in matthew 14 where peter walks on water for a little bit and he starts to sink and i want to try to understand it from our context today and how we live by faith in the son of god who loved us and gave himself up for us that we walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this story here, starting in Matthew 14, verse 22. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After he had sent them away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already far from land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus spoke at once, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, command me to come to you on the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and took hold of Peter. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they had climbed back into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So it's really an incredible story. Anyone's read the gospel, they're familiar with it, that Jesus is walking on the sea towards the disciples, and Peter sees Jesus, and he wants to walk out on water towards Jesus and do the impossible. If you notice, when Peter starts sinking, Jesus connects this all to faith. You of little faith, why did you doubt? He who supplies the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the keeping of the law or by the hearing of faith? In today's context, we have faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us, and he justified us, he made us righteous, he made us holy without blemish and free from accusation. So in today's context, as believers, we walk by faith and not by sight. We live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us, and we're walking by faith and not by sight because we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Life itself can sometimes seem like a troubled sea. This is why Jesus said, in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That in Christ we will have peace, and that's based on a justified, not guilty verdict. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ through the knowledge of a justified, not guilty verdict, and that's how we walk, by faith and not by sight. But sometimes people could look at the troubles around them and take their eyes off Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and they'll start to have troubles in their mind. And Jesus is saying, let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid when it comes to the peace that he gives to us. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And so walking by faith and not by sight, is fixing your eyes, your spiritual eyes, on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, looking unto him. And he was handed over for our sins, and he was raised for our justification. So he was handed over for our sins, he was raised for our justification, and we maintain a man is justified by faith, apart from the works of the law, by which a person has peace with God, not as the world gives does he give to us, through the knowledge of a justified, not guilty verdict. We have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. I say this because I know what it's like to sink in life when 
at first when you have faith in Christ, you feel like you're on top of the world. You feel like you have all this peace and joy. And then you start looking at the troubles and things around you in life. You start making judgment calls based on what you see. Well, do I have a good relationship with God? Seems like I'm going through a lot of trouble here. It could be based on physical troubles, mental troubles. It could be sinful troubles that people are having troubles with certain sinful issues and they start taking their eyes off Jesus Christ and making judgment and assessment calls based on what they see. And while there's an eternal salvation in Christ that can never be lost, there is a present salvation that one can receive from their current troubles by faith in Christ Jesus. And we see that here when Peter says, save me. It says in verse 29, then Peter got down out of the boat. He walked on water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Notice after Jesus grabs him, he gives the remedy to this problem. He says, you of little faith, why do you doubt? That's why there's so many admonishments in the scripture that there's exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, would grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance, which is among the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. So there's exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, those who believe that they're justified and made righteous and holy without blame because of Christ and what he accomplished. There's exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. The lesson here in Matthew 14 is not to universally teach Christians how to walk on water, that this is a lesson program to teach Christians how to get past swimming and now they can learn how to walk on water. But how important faith is in the trouble seas of life and how to stand in your faith and look towards Christ, that you look towards Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. I know that there's people out there that will eventually hear this that have suffered the trouble seas of life and sank down deep into the deep wells of self-condemnation. Like we see in the scripture, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows all things. That if our heart condemns us, this has to do with self-condemnation. People that have self-condemnation, as they look at the trouble seas of life and they look away from Christ, who was handed over for our sins and he was raised for our justification. So going back to verse 25, it says, During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea... They were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus spoke up at once, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. There can be troubles of all kinds in this life, and that's why Jesus said, in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus is saying, you will have trouble in the world, that the world can be like a troubled sea. In me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus says, take heart, I have overcome the world, and in him we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. That whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. That's why focusing our eyes on the object of our faith, Jesus Christ, our spiritual eyes as we walk by faith, not by sight. It's a spiritual gazing upon Christ. Keep your mind where Christ is seated on things above, not on things of this earth. See, they were terrified when they saw Jesus walking on water. They thought it was a ghost, and Jesus spoke up immediately. He says, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. So when Jesus shows up to us, when he shows up to us, he doesn't want us to be afraid. It is I, do not be afraid. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus doesn't give us a peace like the world gives. The world can only give temporal things. Jesus gives us a peace not as the world gives, does he give to us. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And this has to do with judgment towards God, that we are reconciled unto God because of Jesus Christ. That because of Christ, we have peace with him. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. A peace not as the world gives, does he give to us, so we don't have to let our hearts be troubled. We don't have to let them be afraid. 
if we think about how the scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed, that the punishment that brought us peace, not as the world gives does he give to us, is through the knowledge that we have been healed, that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, that this is in direct relation to our sins, that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace is upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So according to Colossians, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation, that by his stripes you are healed, that through the death of his body, being wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, that now we are healed before God from our transgressions, and we are holy without blemish and free from accusation in his sight, that by his stripes you are healed. Hebrews 10.14 says, By one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. So by one single offering he has healed us in the sight of God forever, making us holy without blemish and free from accusation, so that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The knowledge of what Jesus Christ accomplished, looking unto him, brings us peace, so that our hearts aren't troubled and they aren't afraid. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So when it comes to fearing punishment over sin before a holy God, you do not have to sink into a sea of fear and doubt and trouble in your mind because Christ has given us peace through the knowledge of what he's accomplished. If we think about how the scripture says, By this love is perfected with us, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, that as he is, so we are in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. This would be talking about someone fearing punishment over sin on the day of judgment. See, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. When we were healed by the punishment that he endured, we are holy without blemish and free from accusation in his sight. That's how God is. He's holy without blemish and free from accusation. And that is how we are in his sight. So by this love has been perfected with us that we may have confidence in the day of judgment that as he is, so we are in this world, holy without blemish and free from accusation in his sight. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. The one who's fearing judgment day, there's fearing punishment over sin. They have not been made perfect in the knowledge of God's love, that God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in the dying, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. I was a believer at one point in the Lord Jesus Christ, but when I did not understand the clarification of these things, it was like I was lost in a troubled sea. I realized not a person on the planet could help me, and that was the problem, as I was looking to almost any person on the planet, going to pastors and this person and that person, and they were not making me look towards Jesus. They weren't making me look towards Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, looking unto Jesus, what he accomplished and who we are on the basis of that, and we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith so that we don't sink in a reality of self-condemnation and a sea of worldly trouble. In me, you'll have peace. In the world, you'll have trouble. Take heart, I have overcome the world. So then Peter got down out of the boat, he walked on water, he came toward Jesus, but when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. So he started to look at the strength of the wind, he started to look at something else besides Christ. He was tempted to believe that there could be a greater situation that Christ could not take care of, and we can be in that sort of mindset. We have to remember, we have a sovereign God that is in control of all reality. That even the winds and the sea obey him, and it's tempting in difficult circumstances to believe that circumstance is somehow greater than God, but God is in control and sovereign over circumstance. That he causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purposes. So this is about faith. But you see, it says, but when Peter saw the strength of the wind and he became afraid, so he was afraid and he was looking at things outside of Christ, he began to sink, and he cried out, 
Lord, save me. The scripture says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Now this account in Matthew 14 is not a salvific context. This is not a demonstration of Jesus saving Peter eternally, but it's a temporal salvation from troubles in the world. And us as believers are relying on Jesus Christ for everything. Yes, for justification and for righteousness and that he's made us holy without blemish and free from accusation, but the very food upon our table, our very life and our very breath, everything that we have, and also a temporal salvation from different troubles that we may go through in life where you will call upon the name of the Lord in a day of trouble and he will help you and he will deliver you. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. This will be in God's perfect timing and his perfect will. But it's not like God has just left us alone in this world with the knowledge of salvation and then a world of trouble where we have no access to God. We have access to God by faith in Christ Jesus where the scripture says that he would grant you according to his glorious riches to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So if a person is feeling weak and beaten up in this life and they need strength, by Christ dwelling in your hearts through faith, we're strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith, that he was handed over for our sins and that he was raised for our justification. And we maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That is, a person has a non-guilty verdict by their faith, independent from law performance. The law would reference your morality, your behavior, things that you would be obligated to do if you were under it. But we maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. A non-guilty verdict independent from behavior or performance or obedience to the law. And so then we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us. And to do that, we have to die to the law. That through the law, I died to the law that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came to the law, then Christ died needlessly. Sometimes people in their mind sink in the sea of the troubles of life because they don't think that they have a right standing with God. And so in their minds, they have nullified the grace of God because they didn't realize that righteousness doesn't come through the law. They, in their minds and in their life, were seeking a righteousness of their own through the law. Inadvertently, sometimes, sometimes it's the case that when people don't know the clarification of the gospel, they are seeking a right standing, a righteousness of their own. And they didn't know how to walk by faith, so they began to sink. That we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not looking at things around us and making judgments based on ourselves or worldly troubles. We are looking to Christ Jesus. That in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. That in him we'll have peace based on the knowledge of a justified, not guilty verdict. That therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We see in the scripture it says, But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, those whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith the Lord, for the wicked. See, there's no peace for the wicked. There's only peace for those who have been justified, and they are justified by faith. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, having a justified, not guilty verdict, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ by which we can rest. We can find rest for our souls. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. So us as believers were not called to sink into the troubles of our heart, but to actually walk above them by faith that we were called collectively and equally to peace. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. So let the peace of God rule in your hearts, the peace given to us through the knowledge of a justified not guilty verdict and that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his stripes we are healed. So let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace. Let it have command. Let it have authority. It's based on the knowledge of a justified, not guilty verdict. The peace is based on the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. That we are holy without blemish and free from accusation. Hebrews 10.10, 10, by his will we have been made holy 
through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all, that by his stripes we are healed. So us as believers, we're collectively and equally called to peace, not as the world gives does he give to us, through the knowledge of a justified not guilty verdict, and that by his stripes we are healed, that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his stripes we are healed, and therefore having been justified by faith, we had peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not as the world gives does he give to us, and we were collectively and equally called to this peace. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. So that's how we walk by faith, brothers and sisters. But Jesus spoke up at once and said, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, Command me to come to you on the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got down out of the boat. He walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and took hold of Peter. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they had climbed back into the boat, the wind died down, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen.